shot. This is the easiest cyber to answer. I'm gonna say beer. I can't even begin to describe. I'm actually gonna go crazy. I'm gonna buy everybody around on this one. All right, everybody, welcome back to Big Apple Hockey's Bar Talk, where we're gauging our confidence on NHL topics based on our choice of drink. Are you so confident you're buying everybody rounds? Uh, so, so I'll just take a beer or, oh my God, just get me a shot. And by the way, if you ever need any liquor, why go to the liquor store where you could go to Drizzly? Just make it a Drizzly night. They'll bring the liquor to you. Link is in the description down below. All right. So play along the comments below. And we're going to start with the New York Rangers again. And Phil, I alluded to this earlier in our uh, A block. The New York Rangers need a legit fourth line center. I'm going to say beer. I don't know if it's as much center as they need another winger. Um, Lashizen can't be in the lineup. He can't. He's terrible. He, he's just <laughs> he's doing laps out there. Guy is like a worse version of Brett Howden. I never thought I could actually say that. I don't know how this guy continues to stay <laughs> at the NHL level other than the fact that Gerard Gallant must love him for, for whatever reason. I don't know why. But um, th- Played against his dad. Beer. Maybe that was it. I don't know. Maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe Gallant friends with, with Curtis then. I don't know. But um, the, he doesn't belong in the NHL. He doesn't. He's just bad. And you need to get a, at least, uh, I would say, a winger. If you want to move Goudreau over to, uh, to, to wing when you get a center, fine. But I'm going to say beer just because of that. Okay. Anthony. Yeah, I'm going to go beer. Um, I, I think they can use, they could use a, a Nick Benino type guy, but. Um, you know, Tyler Mott, but I don't know. I don't know if it's in, in, enough to the point where I would go around because I think you could just do what Filka just said. But I, I do think they could use another legitimate NHL, you know, proven bottom six forward for sure. Well, I'm going to actually buy around on this because you need to improve that fourth line. If they improve that fourth line, they are a dangerous team in the playoffs. And I do mean the word dangerous. Though Tampa Bay is looking like they're dangerous right now without any additions. But one guy that I said I would target, Sam Lafferty. I know he had the incident with uh, – with uh, Yeah, no, not just that. He also had the incident with uh, Igor in the game that I went to in Chicago. Oh, yeah. Ended up yeah, that's it. Running him there. So even though those incidents were still there, it's just, you know, it's – uh, it's it's something that they need to improve that fourth line, and then they can figure out everything from there. Uh, we're going to go over to the New York Islanders. I just have to fix this um, in a second. But right now, uh, Anthony, you look at the wild card standings. There they are right there. The, the New York Islanders season will be sided within the next three games. Yeah, round. Um, you're talking – you know, if, if they if they lose um, to Pittsburgh, you know, Pittsburgh can possibly build a, what is this, a six point lead on them with going with games in hand. It would be over at that point. Um, the flip side, the Islanders can manage to take two from Pittsburgh. Um, you know, they could be two points up up on them or or depending even what they do against Boston, you know, maybe four points up on them. So, yeah, it, it's a it's a round for sure, because, again, not not only could they pass Pittsburgh by beating them, but. Um, they could also take advantage of a weak Washington team, a Washington team right now that's that's been losing. Um, they're without Alex Ovechkin, who's you know mourning the loss of his father. Which my condolences to Ovechkin's dad and his whole family. Um, but he's away from the team. That makes them even weaker. Um, they're playing the Panthers, and then they got the Hurricanes in the outdoor game. So it's not really going to be easy for them. So um, yeah, the Islanders have a real shot here to to get ahead of Pittsburgh and Washington. Um, and again, if they want to make the playoffs, it's a must, must win at the very least to win both Pittsburgh games. They don't necessarily have to win against Boston, but they got to beat they got to beat Pittsburgh both games for sure. So it's round. This is a layup. Joke. I wouldn't say this is a round. I'm going to go beer here. Yeah, I, I just think that um, you have somebody like Washington and the, the Washington Capitals just don't strike me as a team that's stable right now. Uh, I don't. I, I know that Darcy Kemper is tied for the league league in shutouts, but I, I just don't think of him as a great goaltender. Uh, John Carlson's out in Washington. Alexander Ovechkin is probably, you know, my condolences to him as well. Not in the right frame of mind right now, losing, you know, his father. 
Um, and that team is an old aging team that's dealt with injuries all year. I, I just I don't think of them as a very strong team. I could easily see them slipping and missing the playoffs. So I don't think if if they I, I, I think you're talking about these next three games. I don't think the next three games decide the season. If you want to talk about that next that that 11 game stretch that you were talking about, then, yeah, that that's going to decide the season, I think. Um, I, I think it's that those 11 games that you mentioned before that really, really, really are going to tell the story going forward. But the next three games, no. I think there's still more than enough time. And Washington, to me, comes off as a very, very weak team. Even Pittsburgh, they're, they're having so much issues in net. They can score, <laughs> but they, they can't defend. And, they, and the goalies can't stop a friggin' beach ball. Like, you, you, could, you could put a, a, a gigantic bomb in the beach ball, and they wouldn't stop the beach ball. So it, it just, for me, I, I just, I don't know. I, I don't trust either of those teams. I think when you have a solid defensive unit like the Islanders do and a, and a, and a world-class goaltender, eventually, you know, things will, you know, they'll right in their way and they'll, they'll, they'll correct their direction. And they'll get on, they'll get on course, I think, but it's, I trust the Islanders more than I trust the other two teams in front of them right now. I just want to say real quick, it's a good thing you're or you're doing the Florida trip now where it's good weather in New York when two weeks ago when it was single digits, <laughs> we all would have been really envious as the birds are tw- uh, uh, tweeting in the background. Uh, I'm going to shock <laughs> everybody. I'm going to say shot on this. And the reason why is because I'm not sure if the Islanders really could catch the Penguins at the moment. Not certainly with all those games at hand, but they could definitely catch the Capitals. And yes, as uh, some of the guys are pointing out, even Rob G says it in the comments below, Buffalo's got games in hand, Detroit's got games in hand, and Ottawa's got games in hand. But you also got to win those games in hand, and they're also going to start playing each other. I don't, I don't trust Ottawa. I don't, I don't trust Ottawa, and I'm not sure if I trust Buffalo. They're another well, team Buffalo, that I mean, this guy's can't again, stop this talking than Rob G. Five. Buffalo just lost 7-2 to Calgary, and then I think they lost, what, five? Didn't they just lose to L.A., like 5 nothing or, or yep. 4-1? Buffalo, yeah. Buffalo's got trash goaltending. Yeah, they got games in hand. Yeah, but they, mean, they mean absolutely nothing if you don't win them. Um, so, uh, 100% jumping New York Islanders. Just... Yeah, I don't, think they're 100%, I don't think they're 100% jumping the New York Islanders. And he's an Islander guy, by the way, Rob J. But I, personally, uh, I personally think that the let the spots are really down. Uh, aside from the teams outside the playoff spot, right, Rob G Florida, wasn't on again. <laughs> Florida, Florida, and the Islanders. I mean, you you want to throw Otto and because as it is, you talk about how it's going to be hard Florida for the Islanders. Wild card too. Detroit, Detroit. You're talking Detroit and Ottawa have to pass like five teams to get in. I think it's even ridiculous to even entertain Detroit or Ottawa as back in. Yeah, the I'm not entertaining Ottawa that's, at this point. Ridiculous. I don't trust Ottawa. That's not happening. You're not passing five or six teams to get into a playoff spot. I think Ottawa is a couple of years away. Anyway, I don't trust their goaltending, and I don't trust Detroit. <laughs> well, bless you, by the way. Uh, oh, I actually originally I had Ottawa and Detroit are back in the playoff race. But uh, I just deleted that <laughs> on the rundown because because clearly clearly you can't you can't get that back in. But um, guys, by the way, the Toronto Maple Leafs one point one three million of deadline cap space. They have seventy two point six million dollars committed to eleven players next season. Wow! Yikes! It's one one name that pops up on everyone's radar is Timo Meyer oh, yeah. and. Timo Meyer would be a rental if he goes to the Toronto Maple Leafs. Anthony. Yeah, you know, it's a round. Um, I'm surprised that they're even being talked about in terms of Meyer, but they are. Um, and, I mean, I guess it makes sense. They're so desperate to have playoff success. They're, they're, I guess they're willing to sacrifice assets and then, you know, flip him in the summer and get such assets back. But um, I would – I don't – it's it's actually really surprising to me that they could – pull something like this off but i mean i I suppose they can if some of the insiders are talking about them being in the running for timo meyer but um i just don't know if it's smart to trade for a guy like meyer and then use him as a rental even though he's technically not um i mean i get they want to win but i I think they could spend their assets uh better in terms of defense but just in the in the context of this question um what yes he would 
round. He would absolutely be a rental. I don't think there's any way they could afford to retain him unless unless they moved, uh, you know, William Nylander or, or John Tavares in favor of him and then re-signed him. But I don't see any way the Maple Leafs can keep Meyer going forward if they do acquire him. So um, this is a round for sure. Phil. Yeah, I mean, this has got to be a round. Uh, I mean, there's no way they can actually do this. I would say this is a layup in that regard. Whether or not I actually see Timo Meyer going to Toronto is another story because – um, the word's been out there that they don't want to give up a, a first rounder or a top prospect like Matthew Nyes. Um, they don't want to give up those types of assets. So I don't see Timo Meyer going there. But um, if they somehow pulled that deal off, then yeah, they're more than likely flipping him. Or I, I, to me, what I would do is I would end the William Nylander experiment in Toronto. You know, you, you have too many players like that. You bring in a guy like Meyer, who's a big body and heavy guy who could, you know, he'll play playoff type hockey. He'll score and stuff, and he'll bring a physical edge to his game. I would move Nylander out for something, and that would keep Meyer because it just, to me, it makes a lot of sense. You could recoup assets that way, and you get a guy that fits more of what you need. I think they need more of a guy like a Wendell Clark than they do um, another guy like William Nylander, who's been kind of. Uh, Soft, but yeah, I, I, you know what? I, I get I get this comment here from Core as a joke, but you know when yeah, you no. have a when you have a guy that's a that's a top prospect like that that you're really high on, you want to do anything you can to hold on to, him, especially when your cupboards you know going kind of bare. I mean, they have guys like him and then Rodion Amarov, who are probably their top two prospects, I would say at this point, um, because Nick Robertson is kind of falling down their depth chart a little bit. But he ain't he, as good as his brother. No, well, he's probably never going to be as good as his brother. His brother is <laughs> insane. But um, yeah, so I, I don't, uh, I, I don't, I don't see Timo Meyer happening for Toronto. But I, I w- if it did happen, I would move William Nylander in the offseason. Yeah, I don't see it happening. E- e- them even getting him anyway. But I know that they've been talking about it. But Phil, you just diagrammed how they could do it. You can get Timo Meyer. So it's a beer for me, by the way. Uh, you can get Timo Meyer and then go off and move William Nylander in the offseason or at the draft. Bang, there you go. Now you have uh now you have the room and space to get Meyer in, probably under about nine million dollars. But it's uh they got a lot of free agents on that team next year. As I said, 11, 11 players are getting yeah. paid $72 million. And here's another question. The one reason why you might consider it as a rental, but then reinvest in them, Anthony, because next off season begins Austin Matthews watch. Mm-hmm. And they might want to move him before next season starts. If that happens, I think it's crazy to even think about it. There should already be a contract right there ready for him to sign. And uh, I'd be throwing, I'd be throwing contract at him like dollar dollar bills, y'all, to make sure that he stays. <laughs> so that's that's just that. Let's move on and let's go to the news out of this week. Uh, Vladislav Gavrikov and Jacob Chikrin are being held out awaiting trades. First off, by the way, guys, I hate that trend. I understand it. I hate that trend. But. Uh, Kings should opt for Vladislav Gavrikov instead of Jacob Chikrin. Phil, go ahead. I'm going to say shot. I know it's going to cost less to get Gavrikov, but I think Chikrin actually fits what they need more than Gavrikov does. Chikrin's a good two-way defenseman. I'm not sold on him being... Uh, a 50, 60 point defense and like he was going to be in 2023 or I mean, uh, 2021. But um, I think Gavrikov is, is a good defenseman, but he strikes me as more of a number four, five type than Chikrin, who's more like a two, three, maybe a number one, depending on the team. So um, I'm, I'm going to say shot on this. Anthony. Um, I'm going to go beer. Um, I mean, I think Gavrikov is, is sought after by a lot of teams right now, actually. Um, I think he does move the puck. Well, um, he's, yeah, he's sure. He's definitely more of a defensive defenseman, but I, I like the way he moves. And I know for the Kings, you don't want to give up Brent Clark. Uh, you could probably get Gavrikov without having to do that. Um, so, uh, but 
I don't know. I, yeah, Chikrin is the better the better player overall, but for the Kings to give away a player, um, like a highly regarded player, for them and in the long term, I don't know if it's worth it. I think they just keep growing with the way they're growing by stockpiling picks and prospects because they're having success with what they've been doing. So to steer kind of blow – well, not blow it up, but to make a big move for Chikrin when there's a guy like Gavrikov out there, I think there's, there's merit to that too. So I'll go beer. Uh, by the way, thanks to the, the 53 of you that are watching right now. Make sure you're hitting that like button. And I'm actually going to go shot on this one because I think what the LA Kings need is Jacob Chikrin. They need an offensive defenseman to really complement their game. We're going to give you a situation where they possibly could deal for Jacob, Jacob Chikrin in a few moments in our who says no comments or sorry section. And I – I think Gavrikov is more like a depth defenseman versus Chikrin. But then again, like people are losing their minds on Chikrin. I saw some guy on Twitter just say the Rangers should trade Sisterkin for uh, Chikrin and uh, Vilmelka. And I'm a white defender. I, 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 yeah, I know. He, and, he's, and, he, and, and I went, uh, Phil, I went to it. Either he's doing a great oh. troll job or he's really just insane that's you got to be out of your mind in order to think that because even i broke the, i broke it down and said so you want to get a guy you want to get rid of the reigning Vesna trophy winner for a guy that's had one good season and often injured and a goalie with okay stats so his stats would be really good if he was on a better team uh for Mel, yeah just incredible but i i, um, I like the milk i think he could be a franchise piece for them but it's just you know uh, I wouldn't. Not I wouldn't up. risk that though to to get Chikrin, and not only that, but you're you're not gaining much cap space by doing that, if any at all. And the Rangers are going to have to make other moves. I mean, I get it; the defense would just be stacked if you added Jacob Chikrin um, to that mix. But I don't understand why you would want to go from a sure thing to a guy that's still got something to prove. Yeah, and that. also, by the way, he's not getting playing time over Adam Fox. So what the hell's the point? No, so. and and he wouldn't. Chikrin's a left side defender, um, so he he would either be on that top pairing with Adam Fox, which allows you to move Ryan Lindgren down one, um, or you could even move Ryan Lindgren down to your third pairing at that point. Play him with Braden Schneider. Your third pairing just becomes rock solid, and your second pairing is still Miller and Truba. Like that's that's pretty damn good depth on defense right there. But I don't think they would do that just because they're not going to break up Fox and Lindgren, who have played together for years. Well, I am looking forward to the trade deadline and the end of the Jacob Chikrin uh, trade deadline conversation talk because it is getting way too well, annoying. I, I, right ha- I have I have a, an honorary uh, bar talk uh, um, topic actually. And all right, well, uh, let's do let's do our scripted last one, and then we'll do okay. that one. Okay. Okay. Because. We're going to talk about the Big Apple Hockey trade deadline show, which is going to be March 3rd. We're going to have giveaways and other stuff for that. We, we're, we're getting it all together, everybody, because it's going to be a big day. Hopefully there's still plenty of trades to be made because they're, if they're holding out Chikrin and Gavrikov already, they could be on the shelf for two weeks. But the NHL trade deadline is the best of the trade deadlines in sports. Anthony, I'll start with you. I think it's the... I mean, I don't, I don't follow the NBA, but I, I mean, I, because of Twitter, I do see all some of the action that goes down. I know the NBA is known to have like absolute blockbusters at the trade deadline, um, you know, all these huge ass trades happening. So I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say beer just because I think the NBA, but the NBA deadline seems to see seems to be a little more crazier. Um, but I mean, I, I, I think the NHL trade deadline is better than MLB and and NFL for sure. That I'm pretty certain of, but. I think the NBA is the best one just because of how many big trades usually happen on it. But uh, I would like to see the NHL get, um, you know, see some big blockbusters in the next couple, you know, next two weeks leading up to the deadline because it's exciting. Um, but yeah, that, that, that's, that's kind of how I view it. So, I, I mean, I guess I could put that as a, a beer shot. I'll do, I'll say beer. Okay. Phil, what do you think? You I'm haven't covered round. it with me last year. I'm going to say round. I, I think this is the best one. Um, the baseball deadline is a little weird because there's the waiver deadline afterwards, the waiver trade deadline, and that just kind of throws everything off. So it's like it's a, it's a weird way. It's kind of like almost like how in baseball they have a soft cap and not a hard cap. 
the NHL, there's a hard cap and there's no moves really after that, after that, that 3 p.m. deadline. And that's it. Like moves might come in because they're submitted and they're waiting to be approved. But I mean, the submittal deadline is 3 p.m. and that's it. So usually by five, you, you have an idea of all the trades that are in or even sometimes by four. So I'm, I'm going I'm going around on this. Uh, I, you know what? The NBA can make more headlines with their trade That's deadline, nice, yeah. and it's a little bit further out. MLB, they can make big moves, but then it's like, well, if it doesn't happen now, you always have the waiver trade trade deadline. The NFL is trying to make their trade deadline into something. It's it's basically still nothing. Yeah, but it's unless... always too early in the season. Yeah, and also it's – I mean, they're trying to get it to be up, but unless Jerry Jones is freaking out or this year I think the Miami Dolphins threw uh, picks around – I'm actually going to go round on this one. I think it's the best. It's we we did it last year, and uh, it's going to be us th- uh, this year, Anthony. And it's going to be uh, hopefully we get Phil gone for a little bit. Uh, but it's it's going to be again. You get to that final hour, and just trades are coming in. Rumors are going off left and right. You go last year, it, the Rangers went from Ricard Raquel to Andrew Cop and Tyler Mott in a span of 25 minutes. Yeah. And it's That's it's awesome. what makes it amazing. Yeah, so, trade deadline. I, I mean, listen, in ter- I'm a hockey fan, so to me it's it's the best because exciting. I answered in in the best in terms of because, you know, the NBA has all steals the headlines, like you said. That's why I said that. But, um, yeah, overall, I mean, NHL trade deadline is great. It's one of the, probably the most exciting day of the hockey, you know, calendar year aside from, you know, free agency, depending on what you like better. But. Yeah, I love yeah. I love the NHL trade deadline or, or the draft. The draft is yeah. in there yeah. too. Yeah, the draft the draft is good. The draft too. will probably be number three behind the other two for me. Yeah, yeah. and we we had a great time covering the draft this year. Yep. We weren't even there yet because yeah. I don't think I can. I mean, by the way, the that draft coverage. Uh, thank God they had so many trades. I had to do at least ten shots that day, so that was <laughs> <Yeah>. awesome. So, <laughs> so we and, have one more topic that I added to Var Talk because I just have to because I know how much Mark loves his sagas. But the Jacob Chikrin saga is more annoying than the Jack <laughs> Eichel saga. Mark, I'll All right, I'm you. starting this one. I'm buying around on this. I have to buy around. <laughs> oh my God, this has been. It's, he has been on the trade block for it feels like an eternity and they've sat him out they made sure he like we were talking about this yesterday it feels like they're healthy scratching players and trying to manage assets they've been doing that with chicken for at least two years like it's sort of like oh hey uh so you're injured don't worry take another two weeks to come back we'll see if we can trade you and every day there's a different team that's trying to get them it's ottawa senators or la kings oh. finally just deal them to the kings deal them somewhere deal them to the khl i just i'm tired of hearing about them i thought mark was gonna blow a gasket i just <laughs> really did this for a reaction clearly I, I thought mark was just gonna lose his shit so oh it's just so annoying it really is so annoying <laughs> just likes jacob Tickering. anthony what do you think um i don't know i'm gonna go i'm gonna go a beer. Um, I know I talked about chicken for a while, but the Eichel one was unbearable. And then there was the whole wrinkle that the, they disagreed on how he should, you know, repair his neck. That had an interesting aspect to it and it seemed like it was going on forever. And um, the removal um, of his captaincy. Yeah. 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 The chicken is just yeah. funny because he gets under your skin. But I, I don't think, I don't honestly, I don't think it's as annoying as the Jack Eichel one. That's maybe yeah. to you it is, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, th- then again, I did that, that, Hour long stream of uh, based off, uh, uh, was it Rick Carpinello's tweet? I think it was that it was, oh, don't be surprised that Mika Zabanishad yes, is in it was Rick Carpinello. Oh my Ugh. god, thank god. It you know what? I might, I might need to change my answer. I'd still stick with this one because it's still going <laughs> on. Filk, I'm gonna say shot. Um, the, the Jack Eichel saga was really bad, and the Buffalo Sabres stands for like unbearable. We had that, we had those guys that were coming into our streams and. And 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 basically just like trolling at us and like basically like like talking down to us and all this other crap and just like nah it's like get out of here like get yeah I know it, that type of crap so absolutely it's it's just one of those things where I can't help but just say no it's they, I love it when they're also saying well we want your garbage players 
doesn't matter if you want the garbage players. You might have to take the garbage players because yeah. you got a guy that's not even playing right now. All right, everybody, that is the end of the Big Apple Hockey Bar Talk where we're engaging our confidence <laughs> on NHL topics based Listen. on our choice of drink. Thanks. So don't forget, if you want the liquor store to come to you, go to drizzly.com. Uh, actually, click the, con- the link below to go to Drizzly, start an account, and they'll bring everything to you. Parties, whatever. It would have been great for Super Bowl last week. But yeah, I didn't have the sponsorship until that. I love how you plugged it during bar talk, though. That was like the yeah. perfect way to, to plug <laughs> it, it. It is the perfect thing to do for that. Yeah. And there's still like and subscribe to our channel. We have a lot of great hockey content and an entertaining, interactive podcast. So check us out and our library of videos. Mm, your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.